Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, for April 30th, 2022. The Book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so the goal of Jesus for All 2 is to hear the Word of God in its entirety during the year 2022. The Book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 28 reads, but he said more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray that we will be able to keep what we hear. The book of John chapter 1, verse 1 through 2 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. That is God the Father. And verse 14 notes that, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And verse 12 lets us know that as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. And the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And 1 Peter 2, verse 24 reads, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Hallelujah and glory to God in the highest. And the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6 through 7 reads, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. Amen. And, verse, and John chapter 14, verse 15 reads, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the book of Matthew chapter, chapter 22, verse 37, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these are the first two great commandments, and there are others as well. The book of John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17 reads, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And John fifteen twenty six. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And John 16, verse 8 through 11. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they do not believe in me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you will see me no more, and of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. And the book of John, chapter 10, verse 18 through 19, reads, And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. And the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Amen, amen, and amen, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so today, April 30th, 2022, the word that we will receive is Psalm 97. Proverb 30, because it is the 30th day of the month, and there are 31 Proverbs, seemingly one for each day of the month. The Proverbs are God's wisdom. The Old Testament reading will be from the book of Judges, chapter 7, verse 1, through chapter 8, verse 35. And the New Testament reading will be from the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1 through 19. Amen and amen. And now, Psalm 97. And it reads, The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitudes of isles be glad. 
clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes out before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings like the world, the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Verse 7. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols, worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high. Above all the earth, you are exalted far above all gods. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Verse 12 and last. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. And now Psalm 30. And it reads, The words of Agur, the son of Jake, his utterance, This man declared to Ithel, to Ithel and Ukal, Surely I am more stupid than any man, and do not have the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Who has ascended into the heaven, or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if you know? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not aid, do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you, and you be found a liar. Verse 7, two things I request of you, deprive me not before I die. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me least I be full and deny you, and say, Who is the Lord? Or least I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not malign a servant to his master, lest he curse you, and you be found guilty. There is a generation that curses its father, and does not bless its mother. There is a generation that is pure in its own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords, and whose fangs are like the knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. The leech has two daughters, give and give. There are three things that are never satisfied, four never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not satisfied with water, and the fire never says enough. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother, the ravens of the valley will pick it out, and the young eagles will eat it up. There are three things which are too wonderful for me, yet four which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a virgin. Verse 20. This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is perturbed, yes, for four it cannot bear up. For a servant when he reigns, a fool when he is filled with food, a hateful woman when she is married, and a maidservant who succeeds her mistress. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk. Yes, they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with its hands and is in king's palaces. Verse 29. There are three things which are majestic in pace. Yes, four which are stately in walk. A lion, which is mighty among beasts and does not turn away from any. A greyhound, a male goat also, and a king whose troops are with him. If you have been foolish in exalting yourself, 
or if you have devised evil, put your hand on your mouth. For as the churning of milk produces butter, and the wringing the nose produces blood, so the forcing of wrath produces strife. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As is I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, is every hero. And now the Old Testament reading from the book of Judges, beginning today at chapter 7. And it reads, Then Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Harod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Least Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And twenty-two thousand of the people returned, and ten thousand remained. Verse 4. But the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of all whom I say to you, This one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart for himself, by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink, and then uh, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. Verse 6. And the number of those who lapped putting their hand to their mouth was three hundred men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the three hundred men who lapped, I will save you, and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. So the people took provisions and their trumpets in their hands, and they sent away all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, and returned there three, and retained there those three hundred men. Now the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. Verse 9. It happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Purah, your servant, and you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Purah, his tent servant, to the outpost of the armed men who were in the camp. Now the Midianites and Amalekites, all the people of the east, were lying in this valley as numerous as locusts, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seashore in multitude. And when Gideon had come there, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I have had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned, and the tent collapsed. Then his companion answered and said, This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, that he worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise. For the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand. Then he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet into each man's hand with three empty pitchers, with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. And he said to them, Look at me, and do likewise. Watch, and when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you, also blow the trumpets on every side of the whole camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outpost of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just as they had posted the watch, and they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. Then all the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that they held, 
the tor torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands for the blowing. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And every man stood in his place all around the camp, and the whole army ran and cried out and fled. When the three hundred blew the trumpets, the Lord set every man's trumpet against his com every man's sword against his companion throughout all the whole camp, and the army fled to Beth Acacia, lower toward Zariah, as far as the border of Abel Mahalah by Tabath. And the men of Israel gathered together from Naphtali, Asher, and all Manasseh, and pursued the Midianites. Then Gideon sent messengers throughout all the mountains of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites, and seize from them the watering places as far as Beth Barah and the Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered. together and seized the water places as far as Beth, Bara, and the Jordan. And they captured two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued Midian and brought the heads of the Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of the Jordan. Chapter 8 now the men of Ephraim said to him, Why have you done this to us by not calling us when we went to, when you went up to fight with the Midianites? And they pre pre re reprimanded him sharply. So he said to them, What have you, what have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezer? God has delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Orib and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger toward him subsided when he said that. When Gideon came to the Jordan, he and the three hundred men who were with him crossed over, exhausted, but still in pursuit. Then he said to the men of Succoth, Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are exhausted, and I am pursuing Zeba and Zalmanua, kings of Midian. And the leaders of Succoth said, Are the heads of Zalba and Zalmanua now in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? So Gideon said, For this cause, when the Lord has delivered Zabah and Zalmanua into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briers. Then he went up from there to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way, and the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered. So he also spoke to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come back in peace, I will tear down this tower. Now Zabah and Zalmanua were at Kekor. Karkor and their armies with them, about fifteen thousand, all who were left of all the army of the people of the east, for one hundred and twenty thousand men who drew the sword had fallen. Verse 11, Then Gideon went up by the road of those who dwell in tents on the east of Nabah and Jagbena, Jagbeha, Jagbeha, and he attacked the army while the camp felt secure. When Zeba and Zalmanua fled, he pursued them, and he took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmanuna, and rerouted the whole army. Then Gideon the son of Joash returned from battle from the ascent of Hares, and he caught a young man of the men of Sokoth and interrogated him, and he wrote down for him the leaders of Sokoth and its elders, seventy-seven men. Then he came to the men of Sokoth and said, Here are Zeba and Zalmanua about whom you ridiculed, ridiculed me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmuna now in your hand, that we should give you bread to your weary men? And he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briers, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. Then he tore down the tower of Penuel and killed the men of the city. And he said to Zaba and Zalmuna, What kind of men were they whom you killed at Tabor? So they answered, As you are. So were they, each one resembled the son of a king. Then he said, They were my brothers and sons of my mother. As the Lord lives, if you had let them live, I would not kill you. And he said to Jether, his firstborn, Rise up and kill them. But the youth would not draw his sword, for he was afraid, because he was still a youth. So Zeba and Zalmanua said, Rise up and kill us. For as a man is, so is his strength. So Gideon arose and killed Zeba and Zalmanua, and took the crescent ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, 
both you and your son and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Then Gideon said to them, I would like to make a request of you, that each of you would give me the earrings from his plunder, for they have golden earrings, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. So they answered, We will gladly give them, and they spread out a garment, and each man threw into it the earrings from his plunder. Now the weight of the gold earrings that he requested was one thousand seven hundred shekels of gold, besides the crescent ornaments, pendants, and purple robes, which were on the kings of Midian, and besides the chains that were around their camels' necks. Then Gideon made it into an ephod, and set it up in his city, Oprah, and all Israel played the harlot with it there. It became a snare to Gideon and to his house. Thus Midian was subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted their heads no more, and the country was quiet for forty years in the days of Gideon. Then Jerubbabel, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. Gideon had seventy sons, who were his own offspring, for he had many wives, and his concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, whose name he called Abimelech. Now Gideon, the son of Joash, died at a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Joash his father in Oprah of the Ab Abizarites. Verse 33, So it was, as soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel again played the harlot with the Baals, and made Baal Berith their god. Thus the children of Israel did not remember the Lord their god, who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies on every side. Verse 35 and last, Nor did they show kindness to the house of Jerubbabel, Gideon, in accordance with the good he had done for Israel. Amen, and amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As is, I pray, is every hearer. And I pray that our faith has been deepened and that God will reveal this word to us as to how it relates to us in the time that we are living now. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is the New Testament that we will be reading. Chapter 17, the book of Luke, chapter 17, and it reads, Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck, and he were thrown into the sea, then, that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Verse 7, And which of you, having a servant, plowing or treading sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper, and gird yourself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he think that, that the servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. D does he think that the servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Now it happened, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then, as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was, that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice he glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. 
So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed, as is I pray every hearer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray also that as we have heard the word of God, as it is written in Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I pray that as we have received his word and we have heard his word, that we have been healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ from every destruction that may have been plaguing our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.